Hello everyone, it's Plagin here with the Plagcast, and this time around we're going to be discussing the 2021 winter anime season coming out. Well, specifically a smaller subset of the season. The, the ones that I would recommend, or that I'm hopeful that are going to be good shows this season. Um, there's a lot of them that have come out. I think there's like five fucking idol shows that are uh, releasing this, uh, this winter. <laughs> Which is a ridiculous amount of idle, idle ones. Um, five or six, I think. It's a crazy amount. Uh, I'm not watching any of those. There's also a bunch of other, like, s other smaller ones that I'm, like, not interested in. Like, there's sports ones. Like, there's a skate show. There's a, uh, a skateboarding downhill show thing. There's, like, I think a couple dancing. I think there's a dancing one, if I remember correctly. But there's a, there's a bunch of them. There's also a lot of, like, Kitty ones and like the, uh, the I think the Pretty Cure has a season coming out and stuff like that. Regardless, if you watched my previous run from 2020 uh, for the fall season, you'll know that I kind of talked about all the ones I was watching, every single one of them, even the ones that I was like, I'm not too sure about this one, but we'll see how it goes. Yada yada. This time I figured I would cut it down from the 26 shows that I'm watching this season down to 10 that I actually think are going to be cool. And they're in no specific order during this uh, discussion. They're just however they happen to be in my uh, uh, slideshow of, of things here. So um, the best one could be first, or it could be last, or it could be in the middle of the pack. Who knows? I'm just going to talk about uh, what, what the first or few episodes were about that are out. I'm not going to try to spoil too much. Um, there will be at least some first episode spoilers, but I don't really count those as spoilers since that's kind of like just an opening to the show. That's all that really matters. Anyway. I won't give, like, too huge of spoilers away if there's, like, a huge, crazy reveal during the first episode. I'll kind of limit what's going on. Uh, but that is the plan. I'm going to talk about them, and let's have fun. So let's switch over to our first one, which is uh, Kimono Jigen. Or Jihen. It's, uh, so far, it's about the blonde-haired guy here, uh, Kohachi Inugami, and the black-haired kid whose name I forget. Um, uh, Kohachi is a, like, special detective investigator who, like, investigates supernatural or weird crimes and, like, uh, phenomenon, that kind of stuff. Uh, like, occult stuff, basically. Um, so it starts out with him going to this remote village where these animal corpses are, like, showing up, like, rotting and, like, they were, like, alive, like, yesterday, but they're already, like, rotting and in far stage decomposition and stuff like that. He goes there to investigate and he meets this uh, black haired kid who uh, you find out has uh, stuff going on with him and uh, he's being mistreated and all this kind of stuff. And long story short, the first episode, uh, Kohachi ends up taking the black haired kid back to his office in Tokyo. Christ. Taking him to back to his office in Tokyo, where I'm assuming they're going to be solving supernatural crimes and stuff like that. It's uh, an action supernatural show, so it seems cool. I like the art style of it. It reminds me sort of like Fire Force and uh, those, I think. I don't know. I'm bad with like placing the same company who draws the stuff. I don't have like a notion of all that kind of stuff because art styles evolve over time, you know. There's some that you can pick out that are like, oh, yeah, that's that company. But regardless, it, it seems cool. The art style is great. It has everything you'd expect out of like a, a grizzly like stuff, a uh, show where it has like blood, where there's supposed to be blood showing up. Uh, kind of like just some cool, just neck breaking, flesh ripping stuff going on. So if that's up your alley, you'll probably like this one. First episode's out. I, I can't say much about um, how it's going so far because I don't know if the pace of the first episode is going to be the same or if it was just the, the, the inspector or the detective getting the black-haired kid was kind of how that first episode goes. So we'll see how it goes from now, but it looks promising and I think it's going to be fun. So check that one out if that seems up your alley. The next one we're going to be talking about is uh, this one here which is one of those fun 
long named anime, which is suppose a kid from the last dungeon boonies moved to a starter town. Well, this one's about this uh, kid in the middle named Lloyd. He is a budding adventurer from a, a remote town who uh, hopes to get uh, join like the, uh, the the capital guard and uh, like train his skills because he's the weakest person in his village and he wants to get stronger and yada yada. However, he's not weak. He's just the weakest in his village because his village is the like end game dungeon if we use like RPG terms. We're talking highest level in the entire area. Like even the, the little rabbits will fucking just destroy you if uh, you're not careful. Um, and he's the weakest person there. So needless to say, when he goes to the main capital town, everything is so, so easy. Like uh, there's numerous occasions where there's like a huge like grasshopper monsters that like would fuck up a normal adventurer, but he just like sends it flying with like a punch or he just like flicks it and it goes flying into the air. And he thinks that they're just normal pests that roam around the, uh, the capital because of how he has uh, experienced them in his own village because those are like low tier garbage monsters to him that like anyone, even a baby could like take out, right? So it's about him trying to get into this uh, the, the town guard or adventurer's guild. I forget which it is exactly. Um, but he wants to get stronger because his like brother is like really strong and he wants to like not bring shame to his village and whatnot. So he's trying to do that. And all the while he, I mean, that, that seems to be all that has happened in the last, in the first two episodes is he's just trying to get into this place. And uh, he's kind of dense about the fact that he's actually strong and uh, he'll do something and be like, oh man, I kind of sucked at that or that wasn't great. Or I can only do this, you know, talking himself down. Like he has a very bad confidence issue or self-confidence issue. And everyone else is like, what the fuck? He can do that? Or like, it took me that long to like master that. How can he do that already? This is just some crazy stuff. Um, it seems interesting. Uh, it, it'll definitely be uh, a, a treat to watch Lloyd like realize that he's actually overpowered and see what kind of goes on. And uh, well, we got a hint of it in like the second episode where something else is kind of happening in the world that Lloyd might get involved in at some point, despite uh, the wishes of his guardians and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, seems like it should be a interesting show. It's got some good comedy elements. It's, uh, it takes place in the fantasy world, of course, which is always a plus for me. And uh, it's him just adventuring around, doing that kind of stuff. So that one should be amusing as well. Next, we got... My show that I am so fucking hyped for, this show is going to be fucking amazing. Like, I've only seen the first episode, and I am fucking ready. Now, there's going to be a lot of people. Uh, this is Redo of Healer, by the way. It's uh, Kaifuku Jutsu Shi no uh, Yari Nao Shi, something like that. I just call it Redo of Healer because that's what I know the English title to be. I think there's more to it than that, but... Oh my god. This fucking show... Oh, oh my god, I love it, right? So, apparently it's very graphic and very horrible and very fucked up. Think Goblin Slayer's first episode um, in terms of it getting kind of fucked up. Um, and there are some pretty fucked up themes in the first episode, but not as fucked up as Goblin Slayer's, right? Um, so this guy, this main character that we have here, he wanted to be a hero, and he was like, well, he wanted to get stronger because he was kind of a weakling and he wanted to like help out around his small town. Um, and apparently he got chosen to be a hero um, as part of the hero team that's going to destroy the Demon Lord. So a crest appears on his hand and he's like, oh, I'm going to go train and whatnot. And uh, the, 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 this pink haired girl um, also is a hero, arrives in his town, escorts him to the castle, all that fun stuff. And... Uh, he gets fucked over hard. His healing power is uh, a double-edged sword. When he heals someone, he feels all of their like experiences. 
So he knows like everything about them, like the past and all that kind of stuff. And he feels their pain. So if he, he can regenerate an arm, he'll feel that pain and he'll just like pass out and fucking die, right? So the first episode, it, it's not a, a linear kind of thing. It doesn't take us down the first route of him having a horrible time. It shows us some very fucked up things that happened to him. Probably not even the most fucked up things that happened to him. And how he was mistreated by his uh, companions and the people around him who just used him as basically a pocket healer and thought of him as disposable trash other than that. Um, and basically, he overcomes this nonsense and defeats the Demon Lord himself. And the Demon Lord has this like Philosopher's Stone crystal in her body that he uses his healing magic on to um, exponentially like increase his healing ability to turn back time. So he turns back time and like somehow tells his past self to like get this ability. So he goes to this lake and gets this ability to like see information about people like an all seeing eye kind of thing. And he uses that on himself while he's looking at uh, his reflection and it awakens all of his past memories or he can see like his future of what's going to happen. So he remembers everything and he wants revenge because these people are fucking awful. And oh my God. So he goes and uh, this is before he has his hero thing is when he starts time again or starts the, the actual series. He wakes up, gets his hero mark and he's like, yep. So he starts training and doing things. And uh, I'm not going to spoil much of it. But basically, he's working to take down this pink haired bitch who crossed him over or double crossed. Well, didn't really double cross him, but like just treated him like shit. And uh, it's got some very adult themes in it, like drug use, like sex, um, definitely murder and killing and all that good stuff. So if you're weak of heart or easily triggered, this is probably not the show for you. But I am rooting for this guy to get his revenge against these evil pieces of shit. This is my number one anime this season. And I cannot wait. Like, I want y'all to know, <laughs> I don't know much about this show. I saw, um, I was looking up like, uh, I think one of my friends mentioned this show to me or this manga. And I was like, huh, that sounds pretty cool. And I heard it was getting an anime at some point, And I was like, oh, I'll just wait for the anime to come out and start watching the manga because I don't like to read, you know. Um, so I bookmarked it and I was like, okay, at some point it'll come out. And I waited a couple years and I was like, okay whatever. And then I hear a little bit of rumbling. And I'm like, oh, what? Redo of Healers coming out this season? Oh, yeah. So I, I'm really excited about it because it, it looks amazing, right? It's great. It's going to be great. So that, that's me gushing over that for a little while. <laughs> All right, let, let's, uh, let's get on to the next one before I continue rambling about how great this fucking show is going to be. On to the next one. We have another great show, Hori Mia. Now, this one, complete 180 from the other show, uh, from Redo of Healer. This one is a slice of life romantic comedy. So it's very cute, very great. And actually, I did not realize this was coming out. I didn't realize it had an anime. Because this, this show right here, is one of the very few manga I actually own. Like... It's great. I, I don't have the complete manga. I have a, a small amount of it. It's like the first couple of chapters, I think. But it is great. It's very cute, very adorable. Um, I like the two of these characters. They're, they synergize very nice. Um, and as soon as I saw, like, I saw the thumbnail for it uh, when I was, like, you know, flipping through the new season here. I was like, eh, whatever. That's just a, another weird, like, show and then i was like wait what does that say that's a hori mia no way because they, they look a little bit different and i haven't like really seen them in, well i have seen them cover in the covers but it's been a while um i was like what so i immediately started watching it and uh two episodes are out i watched the second one today Ooh, it's, it's so good um anyway highly recommend it just from that but so it takes place around these two characters um hori and uh, Hori's the girl, and uh, it's Miyuhara, the guy, 
and that's where the Horimiya from the first parts of their name kind of that's their uh, their ship name if you want to say that comes into play so they basically they don't know each other or anything like that about you know anything and uh Hori is uh this very like good student right She's, like very strict prim proper popular that kind of stuff in school and uh Miyuhara, he's kind of like a neat in school. Like, he's very, like, he doesn't talk much. He has, like, long hair and just kind of, like, does whatever. Antisocial, kind of, and like that during school, you know? And one day, while Hori is out, like, shopping and whatnot, uh, she, like, goes home, and her, her little brother's missing, or not missing, he just hasn't come home yet. And then all of a sudden, uh, there's, like, a ring at her doorbell, and uh, Miyamura is there holding her little brother's hand because he, uh, he fell and like scraped his leg or something like that. So he was escorting him home, essentially. But Miyamura looks nothing like he does in, uh, in school. Because Miyamura, if, you, if we zoom in here, you can kind of maybe just make out. These are what they look like. Uh, so the main, the large pictures are them at school. The ones in the photos are them when they're not at school. So as you can see, Miyamura has his like, hair done back, and he has, you can not really see it very well, but he has like piercings on his ears, and like he has tattoos under his shirt and stuff like that. And Hori, she like basically um, takes care of the housework, cooks food for her brother and whatnot, because her mom works late and all that kind of stuff. So... Like kind of complete like different personalities is what they kind of have and whatnot. So Hori doesn't realize this at first. And as her classmate, Miyamura, but Miyamura realizes it's Hori and he's like, oh, hey, how's it going? And like, she's just shocked as hell. And so they start sharing this like secret life of like their, uh, their secret like personal lives that no one else knows about in the school. So he comes over and just like talks with Hori and her plays with her brother and stuff like that. And uh, that's kind of like the, the start of their, their budding romance kind of thing. And uh, it's basically Hori and uh, Miyamura coming to terms with their feelings for each other and getting through all the drama of school life and all that fun stuff. It, it's a very cute show. Do you guys want to watch it? This is the cute show of the season, by the way. Um, last season had Over the Moon for You. Hori Mia is this season's cute show, if you want to check it out. Very adorable. Very, uh, very cute. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's an amazing show. Moving on to the next one. We have, you might have heard of it, Log Horizon. The Destruction of the Round Table. Well, well, well. This is the third season of Log Horizon. And it's been years since the, uh, the last episode, last season was out. Um, so that's why I'm bringing it up. I didn't want to talk about shows that have been like uh, Attack on Titan, where it was like last year or something that the last season was out. But Log Horizon's been gone for a while, so you might have missed it coming out. I know I would have if uh, it wouldn't have been mentioned to me by uh, numerous people celebrating, we're getting the next season of Log Horizon, yeah! So the first episode's out. I checked it out. And, uh, yeah, it's Log Horizon. Yeah. Um, it has something in it that I do not like, but always pisses me off when anime do it. And, uh, the, the, the princess girl who, I forget what her name is, uh, apparently she's engaged to marry someone with those fucking arranged marriages that happen. And I always hate those fucking, like, forced, like, drama things where it's like, oh, well, this person has to get married, and her friends have to be like, no, don't do that. And she has to be like, oh, I guess I guess I won't. I'll turn against what you know, the norms are and do that kind of bullshit. So I don't like that. The rest of it seems interesting, though. Um, from the title, Destruction of the Round Table, if you remember the last season, they have a uh, in Akiba this, uh, this round table of the guilds who kind of work together to uh, secure uh, the area for the adventurers and the people of the land who are the NPCs from the game. Um, and so you can already see in the first episode, there's kind of some fracture going on in the, the, uh, 
round table with some people wanting some things and some people wanting other things and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Krusty, the uh, leader of DDD, I think it was, is still missing. So they have like one person short and they're kind of all arguing because Krusty used to kind of hold the group together. Um, what it seems like. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on in Log Horizon Season 3. It's going to be Log Horizon. If you liked Log Horizon Season 1 and 2, you're probably going to like this one. I'm going to keep watching it. It's going to be great. I feel. Hopefully we can kill off that uh, arranged marriage arc right away and it doesn't last the entire fucking season and just cause anxiety and hate in me. Because if it does, the season will suck. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see everything that does not involve the out arranged marriage nonsense. So... I don't have much to say about this one because it's a fairly well-known series already. And uh, if you have not seen any of the previous seasons, now's a good time to catch up. Throw it out there. Because the other two seasons were actually really great. So, yeah. Next up, we have da -da -da -da, Dr. Stone Season 2. The Stone Wars. Which, uh, I really liked Dr. Stone Season 1. It had a, a very neat concept that I feel has not been done very much or like ever in uh, anime where they wake up on a stone planet and this smart genius guy just like starts making shit from scratch to catch up technology to the, new, to the actual world and whatnot, which is really cool. Um, so season two starts off right after season one where uh, it's still winter. They're still preparing for the war that's going to come and happen between the... Uh, uh, Kingdom of Science and the Kingdom of uh, uh, Empire of Might, whatever that is. And uh, so they're button heads between science and strength. That's what's going on. So science is trying to come up with ways to, like, make the Empire of Might crumble without having to, you know, shed blood and all that kind of stuff. And it basically is setting up for how they're going to do that. And uh, episode one is basically a kind of... Um, Getting you back into the groove of things episode. Uh, it basically, we're going to invent something to help us. Very kind of silly, not necessary, I would say, item. But with Senku, who knows? It, it could be a very important item. Um, but the, the major revelation comes at the end of the episode with the mentalist um, actually having a very good suggestion to do to make... The, uh, the fighting go without bloodshed. Um, and that's what's going to happen in the next couple episodes, I think. So it's going to be pretty great. And I'm looking forward to seeing if Senku can pull off a bloodless war. We'll see what happens. Indeedly do. Next up, we have this show, which... Honestly, I was just looking for Isekai one day. I was like... I want to look up some more isekai because I really like isekai shows. And uh, isekai are my favorite shows because they're kind of interesting. And this one came up and I was like, oh, this one's not released yet. It releases 2021. I'll bookmark it and watch it when it comes out. Yada, yada. Fast forward to 2021. Came out. This is uh, Mushoku Tensei Jobless Reincarnation. I think I said that right. I call it jobless reincarnation. Basically, this guy who was a neat in the first episode, he uh, it looks like he, for some reason, was outside and uh, sacrificed himself by jumping in front of a truck and saving like three kids or like high school kids or something like that. Something like that. Uh, we didn't really get much backstory about how he died or anything yet. It might come up later. I doubt it. I hope it doesn't. It's always weird when you're, like, way in the thick of it. And then it flashes back, like, how you died, <laughs> you know, like, way later. But anyway, the main kid in the middle starts off being born as a kid, like a baby. He's like a baby, right? He literally just comes out the womb, and that's how the, the show starts, right? Uh, well, as he's dying, he, like, starts hearing, like, this language he's never heard before. And then he, like, when he, like opens his eyes after he, like, fully dies. He uh, sees, like, his new mother and father, right? And he's, like, a 30, 40-year-old guy who, like, is a, a neat, underachiever guy, that kind of thing here. 
Um, it, it's hilarious in the beginning because he's like, holy shit, who's this hot woman? He's like, she's just all out here because her, like, her breasts are like very exposed and whatnot. So he like reaches up to try and grope her. <laughs> but he sees he has like little baby hands and he's like, what? And uh, the, the first episode is hilarious in the beginning. It, it's uh, him like growing up and like coming to terms with the fact that he's uh, a baby and in a new world, kind of. Um, one of my favorite things is like, um, damn, mom is hot, is what he says. And he's like, he, he's like gr glad that he gets to uh, suck on her breasts because he's an infant. Although he mentions that he doesn't feel like aroused by it. He just like is happy to do it. I don't know. I thought it was hilarious. There's also a scene where he uh, still has a baby. When he can like start crawling, he puts like either his mother's or his uh, like maid's panties on his head. And he starts roaming around and like very like lewdly starts crawling up towards the maid. And she like kind of cringes back from him for some reason. It's hilarious. I think she's like possessed by a demon. It's, it's funny. Um, anyway, he starts growing up and, you know, since you're a baby, you don't go outside much, right? Uh, once he like is a toddler and can like actually get up to like higher places because he can climb and stuff, he gets on top of a table, looks outside and sees his dad like practicing with a sword. And he's like, wow, my dad's kind of a uh, freak. Why, uh, why is this guy practicing with a sword in this, like, modern age? Because he still thinks it's, like, reality, like, his normal world without magic and stuff like that. And uh, he's like, looks like I'm in some European countryside because it's, like, very, like, no electricity, no, like, big buildings or anything like that. And uh, he just kind of loses his balance and falls back, knocks his head on the floor, like, doesn't cry or anything because he's, like, still an adult. And he's like, oh, I just hit my head whoops you know but his mother like freaks out and like picks him up sits him on the table and like starts like very dramatically chanting a healing spell and he's like wow my mother's really like chuny she's like saying words for like a healing spell thinking that is actually going to do something what a, what a silly woman it's just like a bump on the head la -da -da -da. and then she casts a spell and magic goes off and he's like oh so uh I must be in another world. Shit. And that's when he realizes it and is like, huh, they can do magic. Maybe I can do magic. And so once he gets a little older and he can like move around and do stuff, he rummages through his uh, mother's books, I think it is, and starts reading about magic, but he can't really read yet. So he's like, hmm, I'll have to wait until they start teaching me how to read. And uh, so time goes by. They uh, teach him how to read a little bit. He starts reading the uh, the magic textbooks and trying to find, trying to cast spells. He starts with like a water spell, which is like very basic. And uh, in this world, it's all like you have to chant, you have to chant and like say your entire like thing, what you're doing with all that stuff. And he does it. And like, instead of shooting a, a jet of water out of his palm, it just like has a ball of water that falls on the ground. And he realizes after time and trial and error that you actually have to like, think about what it's doing. You have to like add like a speed and a velocity and stuff like that to it for it to actually move. And so he kind of pieces this stuff together and start doing different like stuff and things and uh, eventually just becomes good at magic and realizes that the world, either he is special in the world because he's doing stuff that the book says you shouldn't be able to do or the books are wrong and he just found out and broke the code and he's like amazing. Um, either way, he goes from being like, oh, I'll just like live in this world and it'll be fine and I'll just be a neat again and yada yada to being like, maybe I have potential. Maybe I can turn my life around and actually do something with myself in this world instead of being a, a useless um, underachiever like I was in the previous world. And so that seems to be what it's about. Um, right at the end of the first episode, they get a, a mage trainer to tar start trading him magic and stuff like that. He's also going to learn sword play from his father and stuff like that. So at that point, he's still like 10, I think. No, he's like younger than that. I think he's like five or something when he's that young. Uh, but anyway, it seems like it's going to be very, very interesting. And uh, 
I'm excited to see where it goes. I like isekai. Isekai are always fun and uh, interesting to watch. Yeah, so moving on to the next one before we get wrapped up in that. This one is also a very interesting show. It's also an isekai. This is Sona Spider. So what? Right? So right off the bat, it reminded me of Reincarnated as a Slime because, uh, first of all, she gets reincarnated into a monster. She's a spider, right? But also because of like the, the system and how it works, where if you do a skill or like you are exposed to something, you gain a skill. So like if you're exposed to poison, you get a poison resistance level one. And the more you're exposed to poison, the more resistant you are to it. Um, and by doing a skill over and over again, you, you know, gain more uh, levels in that skill. Well, that kind of stuff, right? Um, so it starts off with her, like, in the classroom, uh, and, like, uh, apparently what it seems like is a meteor crashes down and kills her whole class. Yeah. So she reincarnates as a spider, breaks out of her egg, and she's like, what the hell, where am I? And it's like, what, I'm a spider? It's like, so she's like, she's not, like, that surprised about it. She's like, huh, just got reincarnated, like, <laughs> you know, shows say... But uh, she gets, like, thrown into things right away because her uh, kin, her, her siblings, start eating other spiders. So they, they all hatch and start eating each other, the cannibalistic spiders, apparently. So she's like, uh, no thanks, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go this, this way and start scampering off and, like, runs into, like, apparently the, the father or mother who's, like, insanely huge. And tries to uh, kill her and like ends up like skewering like a bunch of her siblings on one of their uh, legs and like eats them, stuff like that. So uh, she's like, nope, I'm out. Peace. And just like leaves to a different part of the caves. Right. And then she starts uh, like learning about what's going on and all that fun jazz and whatnot. So that's pretty much the, the show so far. She's kind of learning about what's going on in her world. Uh, what she is, what she can do, and uh, apparently she was kind of like a quiet, like, neat in the uh, previous life. And so she's like, I'm just gonna live in this cave and, like, use my webs to, like, catch food and just laze around all day. Hell yeah! Right? <laughs> That's what she's like at first, and then changes a little bit later, but... Anyway, it, it's got cool fantasy elements, adventure elements, and, you know, uh, comedy, of course, because of how she acts and does stuff. It, it's hilarious. Um, I love it so far. I'm definitely looking forward to more of it because it seems like it's going to be interesting, especially with uh, the stuff that happened towards the end of episode one and start of episode two. Uh, I don't want to say anything about that because that is some heavy spoilers, but I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with the story because um, it does seem very interesting. And I'm curious why stuff happens how it has. Yeah. I also want to see how much of a badass she can be compared to Rimuru. And uh, whereas Rimuru was really, like, overpowered, our character here is kind of weak. She, uh, she can't just expand and eat a whole dragon and uh, become godlike. Uh, she gets her ship beat a lot in the beginning, and uh, she learns to use her webs and how to, like use her speed and smallness to her advantage and like that. Um, so it's not just her being like overpowered, but her learning how to use her skills to her advantage to actually survive. Right. So it's not just going to be her like curb stomping people like with a, an OP skill like uh, reincarnated as a slime was, uh, at least in my opinion so far, uh, it seems like she's going to actually have to work for her, you know, wins and that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. Should be a very interesting uh, show, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on to the next one. Again, shit, shit pixels, because I couldn't find a, a decent resolution for this one. This one is uh, interesting. Mm hmm. I'll go with interesting. So. This is called The Hidden Dungeon Only I Can Enter. And it's about this, uh, this guy on the right who uh, 
he's a, a like a low lowest lowest class noble. So he's not a peasant, but he's like a low low noble, and he's looked down on from the other nobles and stuff like that. Very weak, and uh, he has this skill called the Great Sage, where he can literally um, know anything. However, it comes with a drawback because if you use it, you get like a crippling headache that like makes you never want to use it again. So he just doesn't use it. Um, what ends up happening in the beginning is he's, gonna, he's going to become a librarian assistant is what's the, uh, the story there. However, a, a noble of a higher class than him used their connections to take his place as the librarian of uh, this library. And so he's out of a job, basically. Uh, and so he decides, well, I, I guess since I have nothing else I can do, I'll try and uh, become an, a hero or something like that. Um, or there's like a hero course that they can kind of go into to become like adventurers and stuff like that. I think that's how it goes. So he's like, he'll do that. And this blonde girl, his childhood friend, uh, was also going to be a librarian with him. But since that other noble replaced him, she was like, no, I'll just become a part of the hero group with you. So he wants to get stronger because he knows with his current strength and stuff, he's not going to be able to do much. So he's like, I want to use the great sage or like one of the, they'd like, they'd talk him and his friend, they talk about it. And, um, his friends like, well, did you hear that? Apparently, um, the, the former great sage in order to alleviate his headaches, he would kiss his wives to make them go away, make the pain go away essentially. And, uh, he's like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I can test it out with you, yada yada. All like blushing and bashful and shit like that. And so he's like, okay. So he thinks and asks the great sage, I want to get stronger. How do I do so? And then the sage tells him about this hidden dungeon. And uh, then his insane headache hits, and him and the blonde haired girl start making out. And it actually alleviates his headache. And he's like, oh, that's great. And keep that in mind, because that's going to come in handy later. So, the next day, he goes out to find this uh, hidden dungeon that's like actually kind of close by. Um, and apparently, in order to enter the dungeon, you have to say like a really like stupid phrase like, Hello, dungeonly, I can enter. Please open, because I want to get stronger, or something weird like that. Something no one would ever say like to actually get into a dungeon. <laughs> Door opens, and he starts wandering through. And uh, this voice starts calling out to him, and he follows it, and it's this uh, adventurer chick who's, like, chained up in the middle of a room who's apparently been there for, like, hundreds of years. And she's talking to him and saying, like, yeah, so these chains, like, found me in a trap, and uh, they've kept me alive for hundreds of years because if they're removed, I die and she's just been like trying to call out to people, but no one's been able to hear her, yada, yada. So she wants to talk. And so they talk and he's like, I've been trying to get stronger. And she's like, oh, well, just like touch your forehead to mine. And so he does. And then she transfers her like powers to him, which her powers are the powers of creation, basically. So if you can think about it, think about something, you can like make it happen. You can make it appear. Um, so, for example, she gave him, like, if you want, you can, like, uh, create, you can create a power, a, like a power of flight. Like, you can get wings on your back and whatnot. Um, that's the be creative power. And then there's a, uh, an editor power where you can, like, edit skills you already have and know. So, like, you can edit um, having wings to not having wings, or you can, like, edit wings on someone else. Or uh, in, in one hilarious instant, he edits... Uh, the blonde haired girl's breasts to be instead of big, she's flat because she was complaining about how heavy they are and making her back hurt. And uh, she gets mad and he ends up reversing that. But anyway, that's just kind of to illustrate that. So the catch is creating new skills and using them like that or improving skills takes life points or LP. How do you get LP, you might ask? Well, 
by indulging in like pleasures. So whether it's like eating a bunch of good food, sleeping a lot, basically being sinful is how you get LP. Or indulging in uh, some sexual desires like kissing and uh, all that good stuff, right? <clears throat> So that's, that's this kind of show. That's what this is going to be. It's a uh, action comedy adventure Ichi. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I honestly was not expecting uh, it to go that route. I was expecting like something else, but uh, I'm in. I really like the power. Um, however, the also catch is if your life points get to zero, you just die. So uh, don't do that. So you have to like constantly, if you want to make new skills, uh, you have to constantly be doing sinful things to get more skill points or life points, essentially. Um, and when you do use life points, um, let's say you go down to like 200 life points, he actually feels like really weak and like exhausted, like he's actually been like getting attacked. Um, and keep in mind that creating a skill and using a skill is different. So you can create a skill and that costs life points. You can use the skill you just created and that doesn't cost anything. So it's like a one-time fee. Um, that you use, which honestly seems overpowered as shit to me anyway, um, either way. But yeah, so that's the kind of thing that's going on. So basically he's using his power to get into this hero academy and being an adventurer to pay for that and all this kind of other stuff. So I like the concept. I'm going to continue watching it. And uh, yeah, very, uh, very interesting. Very itchy as well. Um, very, very itchy. I think in the time I've been watching it, in the two episodes, I've had a... Uh, he's made out with the blonde-haired chick like three or four times. He's nibbled on the blonde-haired chick's ear, and she's let out like dirty moans. And the uh, the girl in the back flashed her panties. Uh, so, you know, fun stuff. Also, a bunch of panty shots from the uh, blonde-haired chick as well throwing that out there uh and all that yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna keep watching the show because it is uh interesting honestly i just want this dude's fucking power that's all i want i want to be able to create things out of nothing <laughs> all right moving on to the last one we have which uh is kind of simple compared to the last ones that we've been talking about uh this one is called bottom tier character tomozaki so this guy on the right, or left, I'm sorry, named Tomozaki, he is a gamer. He is a very good, ranked number one in Japan, tier gamer of a game called, uh, I forget what the game's called, but it's basically Super Smash Brothers, right? He's very good at it, and... Uh, Throughout the, the first episode, he basically beats this, like, kid's ass who's, like, really popular in school because the popular kid heard that he was good at it and was like, I'm going to challenge you to duel and, like, beat the shit out of you because you're just a stupid little neat, right? Because the, the, the uh, kid on the left is very, like, unconfident. He's like a, um, what, would you, what, would you, what do you call it? He's a, uh, god damn. I, uh, he's not very popular, he doesn't talk much, he's very antisocial, that kind of stuff, you know? Um, he slouches a lot and, like, just tries to, like, avoid contact with people because he thinks life sucks and he'd rather be playing games and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, the popular kid shits on the game saying that, oh, I just had a bad character, yada, 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 and Tomozaki's like, well, we can just switch characters if that's what you think, I'll still win. So they switch and he still wins. Um, just completely destroys the other guy, right? And the other guy gets kind of pissed. I was like, hmm, whatever, yeah. And uh, Tomozaki's like, well, yeah, I figured that would happen. And uh, goes home and plays some more of the Super Smash Bros. game, right? And uh, he ends up fighting the number two person in Japan who uh, he respects as like a rival and whatnot. And he realizes that the number two person is getting better. They're like practicing and they're, they're getting really good. And uh, he's like, oh crap, I might lose here. But uh, he ends up winning and all that kind of stuff. And after he wins, a second place person called No Name 
It's like, hey, you want to meet up in real life? Tomozaki's like, oh, okay. So he goes off into the world and meets this person who ends up being none other than his classmate, uh, Aoi Hinami, who's the girl on the right here. Yeah, the brown-haired, green-eyed girl. Um, she cannot believe that the person she respected as the number one player of the game is Tomozaki, who's a complete loser, who, like, didn't even fix his bedhead to come meet her. Meanwhile, she's in, like, a, a, a very nice, girly outfit and whatnot. And uh, she's basically like, fuck you, and, like, tries to walk away. So she's like... You're just kind of a, a loser. You like, didn't even fix your shirt or anything like that. And I can't believe that I thought I was going to meet someone cool who actually took life seriously, all that kind of stuff, because he doesn't care about life and all that kind of stuff. Um, and he's like, well, that's bullshit. Of course, you, who like are popular and have life going for you, would think that life is cool. Meanwhile, I just got dealt a shitty hand, and so life sucks because life is a shitty game. All that kind of stuff. It's like a bottom tier game, right? And uh, she says something to him that like clicks in his mind. And she basically says, don't blame the game. Blame the player. And like that resonates with him because he said the same thing to the, the popular guy who said it, the Super Smash Brothers game was a shit game, right? And he's like, yeah, you're right. But like, it doesn't have good rules and yada, yada, yada. And so she's like, you know what? Come with me. And so they go to her house and she starts lecturing him about the like differences and like basically how to play life as a game, right? Like she shows up uh, or she leaves her room while he's in there and she like changes into like a different outfit, takes her makeup off and he does not recognize her at all, right? And so she's using that to illustrate that she can be a different character in life and that uh, he can be too and so the, the premise of the show seems to be or it is it's a uh, tomozaki getting like tutored by this girl about how to win life or like play the game of life better right so basically she's telling him to uh, do specific things in order to uh like achieve that goal right so she gives him like this, like this major goal to do is like have a, a girlfriend before like their, the third year, I think it was or something like that. And then like a medium sized goal, which is to have someone ask if he has a girlfriend or if he's like different lately or if something happened because he like is a different person kind of thing like that. And to get to those goals, she gives him like smaller goals to do at like school. And so before and after school, they meet up, go over what uh, he's going to be doing that day, going over uh, how things went that day at the end of it, all that kind of stuff. Basically, the kind of thing you would assume to do and whatnot. And uh, she explains it to him in, like, game rules, right? Like, so you got to do this to do this. And, like, you know, you got to kind of get repetitious at it and all that kind of stuff. It's an interesting show, right? And... At first, she's like, whatever, this is stupid. But, like, as soon as she start using, starts using, like, game lingo and uh, comparing it to how a game would work, it, like, clicks in his mind, and he's like, oh, okay, got a shot. So some of the things that uh, she's had him do is wear a mask and, uh, like, smile the entire day behind it just to kind of practice smiling. Um, she's had him talk to three different girls one day, um, yeah, just kind of stuff like that, where, like, it kind of, like, builds up over time, and one of them, she wants him to, like, stand up straight to, like, fix his posture, because posture is, like, a lot about how people see you and all that kind of stuff, you know? So, all that is kind of how, how it goes, so, you, uh, yeah, kind of start getting him to change his outlook on life and how things are, right? So the, the show itself is a uh, slice of life romantic comedy. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that those two are going to end up together. 
um, or else. Well, I, okay, here's how it's going to go. And I know it because it's going to piss me off, right? So she and him aren't going to end up together right away. What's going to happen is because she's like doing this like tutoring thing. She's like, okay, now you got to date this girl, right? Even though she has feelings for him and he has feelings for her, right? So she's going to try to push him to another girl who he doesn't really like have a crush on or anything like that. And it's not going to work out. And he's going to be like, actually, I really love you at the end of it. And then like, it's going to be like, oh, okay. And then they had to play, play games together or something at the end. Of it. That's how it's going to go. Like, it's going to be like them getting closer as a pair until like episode nine or 10. And at nine or 10, there's going to be a huge drama section where like she tries to push him away because she wants him to be happy and doesn't want like, to have her feelings interrupt anything and uh it's like him conflicting like does she like me should i ask her out yada yada that kind of thing and uh they're gonna end up like spending an episode or two on that bullshit as he tries to get another girlfriend even though he likes her and uh at the end they're gonna be like you know what fuck it i love you and like that's how it's gonna end or it's gonna do something similar but it's gonna be open-ended so he can choose any of the girls that he ends up getting close to i don't know one of those two things, but that's probably how it's going to be going. Um, I highly doubt it's going to be just them getting closer together as a pair. Um, there's definitely going to be someone, some third wheel is going to end up fucking things up and causing drama at the end. Even though it's not labeled as a goddamn drama show, I know how this shit goes. And it pisses me off. But I'm thinking I'm going to like it, at least up until that drama nonsense happens. But, uh... Yeah. It's uh, so far, two episodes in, it's been pretty decent. Pretty cute, I would say. Indeed. Not as cute as uh, Ori Mia now, now, but, you know. Anyway, everyone, that is all the anime I have to talk about today. Yeah. Woo. Like I said, I have uh, 26 uh, shows or something like that that I'm... Uh, actively watching i'm uh, i'm watching like one piece the new attack on titan season because it's coming out uh the uh, the continuation of uh jujutsu kaisen which was interesting and i mentioned last last season uh there's the armor shop for ladies and gentlemen which is a really short series short episode series anyway um which honestly i'm not liking how it's going this season Kind of sucky last season was interesting yada yada but uh and then uh let's see there's a couple others that are like uh kaibyo ramune which is like a mysterious disease specialist which like the first episode was this girl who cried mayonnaise and him fixing it and that kind of stuff just a, a weird psychological comedy a paranormal thing there's a uh, this other side panic, which is kind of a weird supernatural sci-fi thing, where these girls go to another world, like kill things, and then come back and sell stuff. Uh, what I got so far, I'm not that into it, to be honest. Uh, there's the next season of the time I got reincarnated as a slime, which is good. Um, first episode was pretty okay so far. There's a show called Wonder Egg Priority, which seems interesting honestly when i looked at it it was uh labeled as like a slice of life and i was like okay but then i watched it and it was like oh wait this is no this is this is like a psychological horror fantasy thing and uh it deals with like suicide and stuff like that uh, that kind of bullying stuff so it's kind of an interesting show uh there's the new season, or the second part of the second season of ReZero. There's this uh, Hortensia Saga show that I'm watching, which is honestly not that great. Kind of like a medieval fantasy kind of show. Um, then there's... That's all. Yeah, that's all that I'm watching currently. So, like I said, there's a lot of anime this season, but I only listed five here that I actually enjoyed. So... That I really enjoyed that I thought was going to be amazing. You know? Anyway, I'll wrap things up because my mouth's getting kind of dry and I'm getting kind of tired of talking. So, 
That was my list of all the animes that I'm watching, and I cannot wait for the next episode of Redo of Healer. Gotta throw that out there again. Redo of Healer is the, the greatest one this season, uh, followed by Hori Mia, and then uh, probably one of the, uh, like, the Spider One or the uh, Jobless Reincarnation one, maybe? I think? Yeah, I don't know. All of them kind of blur together after those two major ones that I like, really like. So, anyway, thank you all for listening and sticking around. Check out some anime this season. They're sure to be great. Uh, there's something for everyone, like I said. Even something I did not mention, because like uh, I, I don't like idol anime, and I don't like sports anime and stuff like that. Um, so if that is your forte, there, there's some out there this season. You can definitely check them out. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you all next time. Bye for now.